All right. We are going to call to order the meeting of 7 March 2017 of the Lake Mills City Council. Can we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get the roll call, please? Mr. Sharp? Here. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Fields? Here. Mr. Fritch? Here. Mr. Knipple? Here. Moves us into the correction and or approval of the City Council Minutes of February 21st, 2017. Do we have a motion of adoption? So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you, Diane. And uh, could we get the roll call, please? Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fields? Abstain. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Abstain. Motion passed 3 0. Moves us into correspondence. We'll start with you, Diane. Um, generally quiet. Um, nothing that I would need to bring to this level. And I'd like to welcome Mr. Stephen Fields to the council. And Mr. Fields, uh, do you have any correspondence? No, none that I received. Okay. Doug. Quiet on my front. Rudy? No. Quiet as well over here. All right. And very quiet for me also. The only thing we have is the memorandum that was brought to our attention that uh, you brought in here. So other than that, very quiet. That moves us into questions and public comment. Misty, could I get you to read that for me, please? Questions and public comment. The public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda, unless the item is the subject of a public hearing. If your comments pertain to a public hearing, you're asked to hold your comments until the hearing. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. floor is yours, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody wishes. If not, I will close questions and public comment, and we'll move on to the city manager's report. Mr. Wilkie. I, pro <coughs> I provided the capital reports. Um, I provided the check register, the monthly PD report. Um, and so that's all I have this month. <coughs> Anything for uh, Steve from the council? Oh, one question. Were we affected at all last night by the squall that went through? Not that I know of. I, there were no reports that there were any electric outages. Yes. Were there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was about 12.30. 12.30, mm -hmm. 1 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, it was a very gentle breeze that came through. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Steve. That brings us into item number seven, acceptance of the minutes of the library board for January 23rd, 2017, and they'll go on record as written. On to council business. We have miscellaneous licenses. Could we get that name read, please? Christy Womack, Tavern Operator's License. And do we have a motion of approval? So moved. We'll and the second? Second. Any uh, discussion at all or actually let's just go to the vote. No discussion. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed five zero. Item B, confirmation of appointment of city attorney human Resources Director. Could I get that motion read, please? City Council Motion 17-3-1-1, Confirmation of City Manager Appointment of Full-Time In-House City Attorney, Human Resources Director. 
whereas Wisconsin statutes and the Lake Mills Charter Ordinance provide for the appointment of certain positions by the city manager, and whereas there is a need to appoint the position of city attorney, human resources director, and whereas the city manager has determined that it is in the best interest of the city to appoint Daniel A. Drescher as full-time in-house city attorney, human resources director, whereas the city council has reviewed the city manager's recommended <coughs> excuse me, appointment of Daniel A. Drescher as full-time in-house city attorney, human resource director, and does hereby concur. Be it therefore moved the 7th day of March, 2017, by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, that Section 1, the appointment will be effective April 10th, 2017. Section 2, the City Council does hereby confirm the appointment and does hereby authorize the Council Vice President to sign the motion. Do we have a motion of adoption? So moved. And a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I just want to bring the uh, memorandum that everybody got from uh, former city council Vicki Schmidt um, on the confirmation of the city attorney and HR director. Give her uh, basically given two thumbs up, and uh, from a, from a person who filled that year that uh, position for many years, that means a lot to me. Thank it, you. And as far as the the position goes, what's the percentage for human resource versus uh, attorney? <coughs> is it? I'm fluid? trying to remember. It, it's uh, Vicky has a memo that has it all broken down into percentages, and I don't remember right off the top of my head. But it's it's uh, less than fifty percent. In fact, it's probably around twenty twenty five. <clears throat> Misty does most of it, and then um, the HR director, you know, kind of provides the direction and, and counsel on how to handle certain types of HR issues and does a lot of the research on, on a lot of the legal issues related to HR. <clears throat> I know we had a discussion on it um, during the process, and Vicki's figuring it was probably around 20%, and then she was able to provide me the memo later, and I think it was even less than that, so... And what is the percent of um, time that uh, the city attorney does work for the water utility and the electric utility and the sewage utility? Well, it varies from year to year, but the average generally tends to be about 50-50. Um, so, um, 50 city and 50 utility? Right. Um, so, like this year we would have intergovernmental agreements and um, we have the the complaint on the right of way those types of things are general fund uh, most of the questions that end up with you zoning questions building inspection questions that she handles on a on a regular basis their general fund uh, when we do certain types of enforcement um, for like wastewater and enforcing manholes to be put in or um, the lead and copper inspections, uh, when we have to go in and meet with the DNR, that's water utility. So she spends a lot of time on it. She does the easements for both general fund and all the utilities. She works with Duane on preparing those. So um, there's <coughs> uh, quite a bit each way. Sometimes, some years, a um, couple years back, the utilities probably were up around 75%. We had several major issues at the utilities, and uh, so it took up a lot of time. Um, last year, probably not so much. Last year was probably more general fund, but it's not worth trying to figure out. We kind of got an average, and we just kind of run with that. And the state's good with that, and the Public Service Commission is good with that. Yeah, for the listening public out there, that means that position basically is paid from different funds within the city so we don't have a full-time attorney the city general fund does not it's right. a the full-time attorney is covering electric water sewer um, and then the general fund which covers a very broad set of categories right. prosecutions advising the police department working with the fire department building and zoning parks I mean, it covers a very broad range of issues, plus the legislative issues that come up and how you have to do those, and you have to be reading the state statute. So every time a, a small question comes up for, 
for someone in the department that you wouldn't think a lot about, they go to the city attorney because generally we try and practice preventative law. And that means that we don't want a, a simple decision to all of a sudden be a major legal issue. And so we, we try and make sure that those are taken care of. And so there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of day-to-day -day stuff where you're asked questions and generally if the attorney is about it, they'll say, well, give me some time. I have to do some research. And uh, I, I don't want the legal department to be the office of no, but I also want them to know what they're advising us because, you know, we want to be as careful as possible. Right. And, you know, we have workman's comp issues that come up all the time. Fire department's a walking workman's comp issue. And uh, so we, we have to be able to know what's going on in those areas and be able to <coughs> understand what the statutory requirements are for making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep our mods as low as possible and those types of things. So um, there's a lot that goes on on a daily basis. Okay. Can I ask, um, at an earlier meeting you had mentioned that you did have several different people that applied for the job. Um, it, it is public knowledge at this point, is it not, that some of them were offered and turned it down? Or is that not? I don't know that it's public knowledge, but we did make um, a, a couple other offers to people who were um, one would have been a corporation council for a county in Wisconsin. The other one was a, a um, assistant city attorney in Bloomington, Indiana. But they, they turned the job down for various reasons. Um, the one got a job in, uh, for the city of West Bend, actually the village of West Bend, for a close friend of mine. He called me on the day we interviewed, kind of told me that he was already thinking about making her an offer, but he needed to make some changes to the job description, and he wanted the job description we had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice guy. Yeah. And then the other one was, I think he, he was a little bit shocked at the difference in, in uh, cost of living between Wisconsin and Indiana. Higher here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot higher here. Okay. Is there anything else? One last question. Uh, how versed is the candidate in uh, procedure Roberts rules of order and so on? Well, I, as good as most attorneys are, I uh, feel confident that that's a good, one of the better areas for them. The, uh, I don't think anybody really fully understands Roberts rules of order. The one I knew the best was Randy Radke. And, uh, but I feel confident that this one will be able to advise us well, uh, be able to research and understand what's needed, uh, has a good handle on the history, and uh, same as Vicki, we'll, we'll, you know, kind of, we used a lot of uh, uh, other attorneys to bolster and support our positions over the course of the year, so we have good relationships with Ken Anderson, Boardman and Associates, uh, Quarles and Brady, uh, they all do a lot of work for us in, other, in specialized areas to help support city attorney. And also that at any point where there might be a conflict of interest for any reason, there are other attorneys that he would recommend to take over in those cases. Yes, we usually have a contingent of attorneys based on the type of conflict who we would use. Um, Boardman generally provides us most of those, but if it's uh, an environmental issue, we use Kent and Anderson. Paul Kent's one of the best environmental attorneys in the state. Uh, we use Dean Dietrich on ethics issues and um, certain types of employment issues. Um, so it's it's not like we don't have relationships with with attorneys that could step in and handle it. <coughs> okay. So let's call the vote. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Mr. Shar. Aye. Mrs. Fritch. No. Mr. Foster. Aye. Motion passed four one.
Congratulations. Well, welcome, Attorney uh, Daniel Drescher uh, on board. I guess he's going to report in April. Yes. Um, he wanted to wait for confirmation tonight. As and then they give him a certain amount of period to wind down his practice, and so we uh, had conversations about what day would be the best. April 10th is going to be the official date of his um, start with the city, his employment with the city. Um, he'll have one issue that he'll resolve on the April 15th, and then uh, he should be done with all his practice issues. He's got a big, big pair of shoes to fill, hard act to follow. You want him to? Stand up and introduce himself? Yeah. Come on, Dan. Let's go over there. <laughs> I'm Dan Drescher. Um, thank you very much for the appointment. Thank you very much for the confirmation. Thank you, my parents, for being here. A couple clients in the room also. Um, I really do appreciate this, and uh, I'm looking forward to serving Lake Mills. So thanks again. Any questions, I'm available. Thank you. Thank thanks. You. Thank you. OK, let's move on to item C, resolution 17-14, sale of property to WISDOT for Highway 89 project. Can I get that read, please? Resolution 17-14, acquisition of right-of-way by Wisconsin Department of Transportation at 1117 South Main Street. Whereas the City of Lake Mills is partnering with Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the reconstruction of portions of Wisconsin 89 Main Street. And whereas in the proposed project, WISDOT is planning to construct highway improvements at the intersection of Sandy Beach Road and South Main Street to meet current design standards set by WISDOT and the completion of the highway improvements will require WISDOT to purchase 1,954 square feet of fee area for right of way and 11,374 square feet temporary limited easement. And whereas under federal highway administration regulations, it is necessary to understand the rights of landowners under Wisconsin eminent do domain law. And whereas WISDOT is asking the city to officially donate the right of way and temporary limited easements. And whereas the city council understands that such concurrence with respect to the donation waiver of the property owners Right to compensation as outlined in the letter from single source waives to the $9,900. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lake Mill City Council concurs that the proposed donation of 1,954 square feet of fee area for right of way and 11,374 square feet temporary limited easement at 1117 South Main Street to Wistat as right of way for the completion of this project is in the best interest of the city. Be it further resolved that the city managers authorize to sign the form specified in the February 23, 2017 letter from single source and related documents. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. And a second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go into discussion with this, Steve. So it's looking, what we're looking at here is the green is the, the part that they're asking for donation and the purplish is the limited easement. The, they're basically asking for a donation of all of it. And the pink is the temporary limited easement, and the green is the permanent right of way. Um, one of the reasons that I support this request uh, is that um, we were going to give ourselves that right of way, anyways, to widen the street. So they're doing it for us. So. They essentially are doing the work that we had planned on doing anyway. So one of the reasons we bought the lot and had that conversation at the beginning. Um, the second one is is that <coughs> what they're planning on doing is bring. They're going to shut the roadway off right here. They're going to they're going to do work down to here. And they're going to have access from the south, and then they're going to shut the roadway off and do the construction to the south. And the way they're going to access Sandy Beach Road is across there. Uh, originally, they were proposing to build a third lane over on this edge over here, and it took up a lot of um, property and um, trees and other um, property that people didn't want to lose. So this ended up being a better option for both them and us, and so I recommend that that uh, based on the advantages to the city of Lake Mills from, from this, that we donate it rather than requiring it. 
the other conversation I had with Betsy is is that they pay us nine thousand nine hundred dollars, but then we're <coughs> that leaves us nine thousand nine hundred dollars short on being able to do some other work that we'd want to do. Uh, so it's in our best interest to keep it in the project, because I'm pretty sure that that um, they're going to end up hitting their cap pretty quick, anyways. By uh, temporary easement, what does that mean? It means that they have the right to use it during construction, but that it goes away as soon as the construction is done. Except um, for the, except for that green. The green is the permanent right of way acquisition. Right. That would um, be the pavement and so on. Well, it would be where the sidewalk goes, and then the throat. They're actually going to widen the throat to a normal street width rather than the width oh. that Sandy Beach Road is, because mm -hmm. you know how hard it is to make that corner. You almost always drive up on the property, anyways. Yeah. And so they're they're pulling the sidewalk back to this black line, and then they're making the street turn actually into this area right here, and so that it's easier to get your vehicle and your trailer and that pulled around that corner, especially when there's another car sitting there. Uh, so it they're basically doing the work we had planned on doing anyways. They're reconstructing that whole throat all the way back and. And uh, we were going to do that with our own money and, and give ourselves the right away anyway. So we actually end up better off than we had anticipated. And it helps the project in the long run. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any? I just want to reiterate what Steve said, that when we reach a cap on the money, it's going to come back to us anyway to find more money to do whatever else there has to be and chances are we will hit that cap. So even though right now it looks like we're, you know, giving, letting them have 9,900, but they're really, what we're really doing is just saying, keep it in the pot, we'll use it where we need it since we probably don't need it as bad here. Right, and, and to a certain extent, We'd have paid $9,900 to rebuild that road, and we'd have given ourselves that right away anyway. So mm -hmm. we're actually saving $9,900 by, by giving this to them because of the road construction. So it's a wash for us, and if you keep it in the project, it ends up being uh, something where we'll be able to do something at the end of the project that we might not have been able to do. Right. Well, I'm sure something will come up that we didn't anticipate. I'm sure we'll, get, we'll be significantly into their contingency. I know we are already because we had, there were things in the right away acquisition where we ended up paying more than what was originally budgeted. So um, we're already into the, some of the contingency and I will be well into it by the end of the project if I know my state projects. Okay, thanks okay. for explaining that. Okay, let's call the vote. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Recommendation for future agendas. Does anybody have anything right now? I know that we'll have the zoning issue that passed the plan commission on the next city council meeting. Um, We'll probably start to see some bids come through. I'm not sure if, I think the um, Brewster Street bid might be in by that time. And so that those will be two items that I think I know will be on the agenda. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else. Are we talking about the brewery um, from the Planning Commission? Yes. yes. Uh, it's the wording. language that followed behind the matrix that we approved the the meeting before. Okay, so that's fine. I just wanted to clarify. We actually won't see the conditional use permits for the Lane Smith Brewery um, until um, probably the second meeting in April because it won't hit plan commission until the 28th of March. Right. And we have two of them then. We have the Manly one and the um, Heblon or Oblon Brewery. So. 
Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, then we are adjourned.